Hello to everyone out there. I hope you're doing well these days. And uh, I know there's a buzz around as things are beginning to, to reopen and lighten up. And, and But I wanted to let you all know that a decision has been made that, that we will not gather in person for worship until medical professionals have said that it is safe to do so. I believe that this is the best way that we can keep John Wesley's rule of do no harm. We can, when we can gather together again without mask and social distancing and limiting the number of people to, in the sanctuary, then we'll gather again with joy. You know, this week's reading, lectionary reading from the book of Acts says, All who believed were together and had all things in common. We've been together in spirit over these past few weeks, and, and we look forward to the day when we can be together again in person. But until then, uh, we'll continue to worship online. And I know that people are getting out and about, and, and some of our staff will be returning to the office, and the building will be open with a limited schedule. Uh, those in the building will be wearing masks and doing that social distancing. But if you come to the building, I'd ask that you would follow those procedures as well. We'll continue to look at ways that small groups might be able to meet at the building, but I'd encourage you to continue the great job that you've been doing with meeting by Zoom and in other formats as well. This Sunday I'm preaching from the 23rd Psalm, and you'll remember those familiar words, The Lord is my shepherd. One of the jobs of the shepherd is to protect the sheep. Our pastors and our staff are shepherds as well, and part of our role is to keep our flock safe. Well, with an incredibly busy schedule, schedule, I was able to get a little time with Dr. Mark Boom. Uh, Dr. Boom is the president and CEO of Houston Methodist. Houston Methodist Hospital is the flagship of that, but it is also a network of six other acute care hospitals, a long-term acute care hospital, a very large primary and specialty physician organization, and the Houston Methodist Academic Institute, which houses all of their educational and research programs. Houston Methodist is consistently ranked one of the country's best hospitals and one of America's 100 best companies to work for. And it's a part of the Texas Annual Conference of the United Methodist Church. Dr. Boom is the Ella Fondren and Josie Roberts Presidential Centennial Chair and Assistant Professor of Clinical Medicine. Dr. Boom, how are things in Houston right now? Well, thanks. It's, it's good to be here today. And, and as I said to some other people earlier today, it sure is nice to be talking today rather than a month ago. when We were watching, you know, with a lot of alarm, a curve that was going up quite steeply. You know, the good news now is we look to be about, you know, two and a half weeks or so past the peak, whether we look at the number of people who've been infected with COVID uh, and are being diagnosed with COVID or whether we look at the hospitalizations that occur at Houston Methodist and across the community, we peaked somewhere around April 10th, 11th, 12th, somewhere in that range. And so it's it's great to see. Now, it's not been a steep decline uh, post-peak. Um, it's, it's, it's a very rapid upward hill and then a much more gradual uh, downhill and somewhat plateaued, but nonetheless going in the right direction. So it's very encouraging that we are, you know, moving uh, slowly, but but moving definitively, I think, towards uh, uh, the right direction here. All right, that's great. I'm glad to hear we're headed in a good direction. And I wanted to ask, though, for our folks at St. Paul's, uh, when when can we, as a church that's just down Main Street from the hospital, uh, when do you think we might could get back to what would look like business as usual? So we've, we've spent a lot of time talking about that as leaders of the Texas Medical Center. I've spent a lot of time uh, with Bishop Jones, who, who really has played a wonderful leadership role, of course, for the Texas Annual Conference, but also really across many denominations across uh, Greater Houston. And, you know, there's no easy answer um, to that question, of course. Um, right now, I believe is too soon to return to, to large worship sort of services, really, you know, putting people together in close proximity in large numbers is the wrong thing to do at the present time. We want to ease the restrictions. We want to test the restrictions that are the easing of the restrictions that's happening. What I mean by that is the governor, I think, very thoughtfully eased some restrictions on businesses and other, other areas with a measurement period that will happen in about two weeks after the easing of the restrictions. Personally, I think, um, uh, you know, for a variety of reasons, uh, the governor and lieutenant governor went a little too far in terms of easing the restrictions in places of worship. And, and that's why Bishop Jones and many others sort of stepped in and said, you know, that's great, but this is the advice we're going to follow. And, and our uh, Texas Medical Center leadership very consistently does not believe the month of May is the time to be putting back 
large gatherings of people in any setting, um, let alone, of course, a faith-based religious setting. And so I'm hopeful that, you know, when we target, you know, the end of May, um, you know, somewhere around May 31st-ish, I think is the uh, the last Sunday there. I think that's the right date. Uh, and uh, I hope uh, that, you know, we may be able to return to starting to be normal. Now, starting to be normal will mean things consistent with what you see in the governor's order, which is, you know, a, a lower capacity of congregations, much physical spreading out. So, you know, alternating pews, putting family groups together, couples together, but then in between those different groups, having quite a bit of space, having very significantly amplified cleaning procedures, you know, et cetera. You know, clearly many of the normal practices we would experience in a church from passing a collection plate to, you know, taking communion in the various different ways that different um, denominations do that are going to have to be really rethought um, because, you know, we can't be passing a plate from person to person across a room or we can't play, you know, pass, you know, wine or, or bread that's been broken, you know, uh, as we take communion. So we'll really have to rethink some of those things for, for quite some time. My hope to the question of when will it be back to normal, normal is going to be a tough thing to define here because I think we're going to be somewhat abnormal for a long period of time until we have a vaccine. But I would hope that in the summer months, you know, we could have, uh, you know, much, much more normal experience with masks, with social distancing, but uh, but a much more, you know, enriching and, and normal and, and physical presence, um, you know, for worship services. Okay, that's great. That gives us uh, gives us hope and things to look forward to. I wonder, uh, I wonder if there are things that we can do to help you and our hospital. Well, thank you for asking. You know, I, I will say the outpouring of support from the community, of course, uh, the, the Texas Annual Conference, um, all of the churches um, that are part of the conference, has, has been nothing short of uh, magnificent and and so meaningful, you know, for the frontline workers who have been working tirelessly and very stressfully, um, you know, going home, worrying about, am I going to bring a virus back home to my family, going home and figuring out how to change safely, I mean, all the different things that have been there. The, the outpouring of support, you know, um, and prayers has been uh, has been really wonderful. So, you know, number one, keep on praying. I think prayer uh, has been working. Clearly, we're in the right direction here, and it is deeply appreciated. Just small words of encouragement. I mean, many of you, of course, many congregation members, many people you know in your neighborhoods or healthcare uh, workers, just give them a thumbs up, give them a, you know, a nod of approval, give them a thank you. Do the same thing for the people who are doing the trash and who are, you know, delivering the mail and delivering the packages. These are folks who, you know, really have kept us going and, and uh, deserve a great word of thanks. That's, that's the biggest, um, you know, thing that, that people can do to help. If, if financially anyone wants to help, we have an infectious disease research fund to help propel research. We also have a support fund for our healthcare heroes. Certainly happy. I mean, you can go on our website, you can find out anything, but, but most importantly, I mean, I wasn't here to do a sales pitch, but most importantly, uh, you know, prayer and uh, words of encouragement um, are so meaningful to all of us. Thank you. Well, we'll certainly keep you all in our prayers and we'll add those links to, to give to those places on our website as well. So thank people you. can find those easily. And, uh, I just, I, I thank you for your time today, Mark. I know how busy you are. You've got another meeting with judge Hidalgo later today. And, but I do want you to know that we keep you and all the folks at Methodist hospital in our thoughts and prayers, and that you can call on us if there's things that you need. That is so deeply appreciated. Thank you so much. I am so appreciative to Dr. Boom and all those who are working in the health healthcare profession and the work that they're doing. I hope you'll keep them in your prayers uh, as they continue to find a, a way uh, to rid ourselves of this coronavirus. Uh, last week in our worship service, we honored our 2020 confirmation class, and three of them are here with us today: Rachel Anderson, Mark Wheeler, and Jacob Gunn. And we have a word; uh, they have a word to share with you. So let's take a look. Hi, my name is Rachel Anderson. I'm 12 years old and I'm in confirmation. When I was in fifth grade, I was really looking forward to being in confirmation because both of my siblings had been through it and they had a really great experience. Being a part of the church has always been important to me because my grandfather, Jim Bankston, was the senior pastor and I've been here at St. Paul's for all of my life. I was baptized here as an infant and my family tells me I cried during the entire service. I can't wait to take the vows that my parents took for me at that time. Since I was basically born into the church, it was very interesting to go see and experience how other religions worshipped. 
Confirmation has been a really amazing experience for me because I love learning more about my church and its history. If I had to pick my favorite lesson, it would be my teacher Mac McLaren's lesson on chips and salsa. If you're in confirmation, you know what I'm talking about. If you're in fifth grade, you're going to want to know what I'm talking about. Confirmation is the start of getting to participate in fun things like UMY and youth trips. I've made lots of new friends here and had fun on trips we've taken, from our Galveston retreat to our Old Moon retreat, which had to be a Zoom call. It's all been great. If you're a fifth grader, I highly recommend that you take this course because even though we've been in quarantine, the teachers have made it a really fun experience. Thank you. Hello there. It is me, Mark, again, of course. Yep. So, confirmation. Why I love it. Confirmation was amazing this year. I met new people, old friends, and just learning more about my religion. It was an amazing year round, and right now, even though we can't have a confirmation confirmation service, well, I mean, maybe in a little bit when the whole entire pandemic's over and all that jazz. But yeah, I loved confirmation because I just got to see everybody I could see. Hello, my name is Jacob Gunn. I go to Beckendorf Junior High in Katy, Texas. Even though I live in Katy. I still go to St. Paul's United Methodist Church in Houston. I will be in the high school graduating class of 2026. I've, for the past year, I've been in confirmation. So I've been asked to speak about confirmation. Number one, I love the, the dinner and the food. The dinner, you get to sit with your friends, you get to talk about anything you want to talk about, and the food is just spot on. You just get to pray, you can talk about whatever you want to, and it's just a really good time. But more importantly, confirmation is about learning about the church and developing your own, my own faith. I've had a number of older friends go through confirmation, and I've been really loving the process of confirmation, all that it's done for me. I've had lots of fun, like the Saturday nightly meetings, the Galveston trip, and the mystery trip, plus the visits to all the other worship places and other religions. There's still a lot of fun to be had. I've, there's youth group meetings, summer mission trips such as JUMP, um, which is a junior high mission trip about going to help other people who are less fortunate than us, who don't really have the money to go and um, fix their houses. All in all, I think confirmation helps me deepen my own faith and learn how to, and it helps me learn and grow in my own place in our church.